In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play the entire bass neck and not just one section of it. So that backing track is in the key of F minor. And that's the example we're going to use, and it's all these shapes. That looks quite intimidating at first glance, but what this is, if we break it down, is an F natural minor scale, and that has four flats in it. These are the notes. F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, and F. Now, you might notice that I just played that starting with my first finger. And this really is the key to this lesson and what I want to show you today. And that is starting a scale off of different fingers. And the other skill that you need to know on top of that is to know where all the notes of the key are. What, what I mean by that is the, the, the starting note of the scale. So in this case, F. If you know really, really confidently where all the Fs are on the bass, then you can do this with ease. You can download that backing track, by the way, to practice this. Uh, the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a bass line over this. Today is more of a fretboard knowledge patterns lesson. Let's start off with quickly talking about where all the Fs are on the bass. So obviously, you know the string names, E, A, D, G. So E to F is a half step. Anywhere there's an E the F is going to be a half step above it. So then we can use octave patterns to find the other Fs very quickly. I'll put a link to the lesson. I'll put a link here to a lesson with five really important octave shapes on bass. I'll run through them. F to F. If you want the E string, it's very easy. Go two across, two down. That way you get the next F. Actually, if you have an F here, you can find the next one on the string down and across one, two, three, four, five fret. Use the same octave pattern. We've got more Fs. Suddenly, I've got four Fs there. There's another octave pattern. There's another one. So this is the basis of the lesson. If you're very comfortable of where an F is, or any note, I'm just doing this in this particular key, then we can springboard our bass lines and solos and fills off of that note starting on a different finger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Here on the eighth fret of the A string is an F, one of those Fs we just found. If I start with my first finger, I'll get this pattern. If I start with my little finger, I get this pattern. I'd have to shift to get the octave. Second finger. I find that I use the third finger a lot less when playing a full scale, but if I play a pentatonic or a minor blues, which I was doing a lot of in the intro, then I like to use the third finger to do this kind of thing. Because these are the minor pentatonic shapes. It just removes a couple of notes from that full scale. And then it, that's a sound that's really great. And actually starting with your third finger there with this pattern. Whenever there's an F and I'm on my third finger, I know that that collection of notes fits. Now this is on the A string. What would happen if I started on the 15th fret of the D string? That's where another F is. Well, I'd have the same pattern. I'd have a little bit of an extension of the pattern, but at least I know that I can play those notes when I get to that third finger on an F. So that really is the basis of it. I didn't do um, little finger going down one string. I mean, there are more patterns than I'm showing you, but I'd like just to show you something that maybe you can go away with in your own practice time. Try a few of these and come up with a few of your own. So if I'm on an F, that same F up here, I know that if I descend on the same string, I get that pattern. Anywhere there's an F, that happens. So I'll kick in the backing track. I won't play very musically. I'll just play a few of those patterns. I don't even need to do all of the notes within the scale like this. 
I might just take just the first six notes that was starting on the first finger. Even that, by the way, is just a very good exercise. Play the first six notes, in this case, of the F natural minor scale, and as quickly as you can, find all the Fs and play those six notes based off the F. I'll do that to start with, and then I'll introduce a couple of the other patterns, which I'll show you as I go. You must also know the descending version. Like that, in any position, you should know how to go up and down from the note. You can move this to any key, and this principle works for any scale that you can care to think of. Just to upgrade the exercise a bit, if you know that F natural minor is related to A flat major, which it is, you can then switch to an A flat, uh, fourth fret E string is one, and play A flat major, and that too will fit over this. And there I just did one shape, which was starting on my second finger. You probably know this one. Finger-wise, I'm going 2-4, and then 1-2-4, and then 1-3-4. And there's the A-flat. I'm, I'm ending on the A-flat. And I can start on that A-flat again with the same pattern and I run out of strings there. I could move up to get that last bit. So it really is all just about patterns, or not all about patterns, because there comes a point where you your ear takes over a bit. You know the sound that's going to happen because you link the pattern to, to the sound of, you know, an F natural minor scale or an A flat major scale, and you're guided much more by your ear at that point than you are by by patterns. You can get a bit boxed in by patterns and just learn those without thinking about how they sound. So I really do urge you to, to link the pattern to the sound as you're going and you know sing it up and down in your head. I try and match that to what you're playing on the bass. Okay, well what about making that exercise a little bit more musical? Let's explore that now. <laughs> Okay, what sort of things was I doing just then? So I was doing the same principle of, um, you know, finding an F, starting on the first finger and knowing what notes are underneath my fingers, you know, shifting a little bit to the little finger. And what that then allows you to do is use a couple of devices that sound good with this kind of practice. Now, I'm not playing a bass line here, which 90% or 99% of the time we would be doing. That's gonna be next lesson, by the way, on this same backing track, so do subscribe if you want notification of that lesson. But this is more of a um, just scale exercise, but also turning it into like a bass solo. So the couple of things I was doing was just using fragments of the scale. So I wasn't running up a scale and running down it, that sounds like a scale exercise. I was using like the pieces of the scale and applying a bit of phrasing to it. So that's in the form of rhythms. I was leaving some space as well. So like here. Ascending, descending also. That's key to making anything sound musical. That's using articulations. You've got um, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bends, vibrato. That's a bend. And that's bending to a blues note, which always sounds good. Repetition. If you're doing this kind of stuff, it sounds like a solo if you repeat. I'll do a bit more. Mm -hmm. 
I went a bit pentatonic there, third finger. That's something that I love doing and when you play and when you practice this, I think that you'll find certain moves that you like doing and that's that's great, that's what you want to do. When you transcribe players, listen to bass solos, fills and, and bass lines and figure them out, you will learn from your favorite players. And if you do that, you will eventually come up with your own way of doing things that you like. So yeah, none of my lessons are about play like me. It really isn't about that. It's about explore these ideas, find what you like and go with that. So do go and download that backing track so you can practice all this stuff. Plus the PDF, I'll put all those shapes up and just really it's all about the fact that within that big splodge of blobs, you've only got seven different notes actually, if it's the natural minor um, shape. You've only got seven notes. And that, that's it, and it's just a case of knowing where to play those in different positions. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to play a bass line over that same set of chords, that same backing track. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you then.